What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about words that Brits use differently. Or, depending on your point of view, this could be words that us Americans use differently. But either way, these are words like pants that, that mean one thing here in America, and something totally different in Britain. So I think this should be quite entertaining, actually. So I'm excited to take a look. Carry on? <laughs> Carry on? Oh boy. Uh, so let me see here. What, what would this mean here in America? Carry on? Well, it first I think of like on an airplane, you have carry on. <laughs> like carry-on luggage, which is stuff that you, like a backpack or like a little suitcase that you bring on the airplane, you put it above your seat or, or under the seat in front of you. It's called carry-on. Do, do British people have that? And do you call it carry-on or something else? Otherwise, this just means carry-on. <laughs> like, like a word of encouragement? Like, keep going, carry-on. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel like that's what we're talking about, though. Huh. Unless you've been living under either a rock or the rock, you'll no doubt be familiar with those memes and t-shirts and tea towels that say, keep calm and carry on. Yeah. Especially those of you who were already following the Lost in the Pond Facebook page seven years ago. <laughs> and while the original poster was used by the British government as a call to action at the start of World War II, the significance of it in the 21st really? century has been realized in both Britain and America. So... Did this, like, meme start as, like, a British thing? It has a crown on it. Keep calm and carry on. This is a phrase that I have seen. I've heard this a lot. Like, like he's saying, like, many years ago, it was everywhere on the internet. So, carry on being used in this way. Like, I, I understand it. I, I'm familiar with this. Is this how most British people think of the phrase carry on? Because I also think of airplane luggage. <laughs> so hang on then, you're probably thinking, how on earth did it make this list? Well, as you've seen by now, words and phrases can have multiple meanings on both sides of the pond. In Britain, to carry on with someone means to have an affair with them, which really makes you rethink the country's wartime propaganda. Oh, what? Huh? Oh, I've never heard that before. That is a, <laughs> that is a completely different meaning. Oh my God. Um, to carry on with someone uh, is a phrase that means to, to have an affair with them. Really? I've never heard that. That I don't think any Americans know about that one. That's pretty fascinating to me. <laughs> That's a totally different meaning. Totally. Oh my God. This, this kind of scares me like a little bit. Like <laughs> how different sometimes some of the words and phrases really are because I might be talking about airplane luggage, and you might think I'm talking about affairs or something. Like, what? Whereas America's use of the words carry on could take us back to our first entry when we talked about American Airlines. Because in American air travel parlance, that small luggage that you can take onto the plane yeah. that we know in Britain as either hand luggage or baggage is known in the United States as your carry on or carry on luggage. Ah, there we go. I was wondering. If this isn't a phrase in Britain, what do British people call this? You called it, what do you actually call this instead? Luggage or baggage is no baggage and or luggage that you can take onto the plane that we know in Britain as either hand luggage or hand, hand luggage. Or baggage is no hand luggage or baggage. Yeah, completely different. Huh. Who knew? Known in the United States as your carry-on or carry-on luggage. Yeah. Now it's quite easy to see why this one got lost in the pond because when English was developing in the United States, planes didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> what is this? Some of these words just make me laugh. Uh, banger? Banger. <laughs> okay, what does banger mean in America? <laughs> That's where we, we need to start. Gosh, a banger? That's not a super common word. Um, maybe I'm just not with the young, hip <laughs> people anymore. Uh, banger? The only way I've heard banger 
is like something that's really, really cool. Um, like you could even refer to a party as a banger. Some, like something that's awesome, cool, out of control a little bit. A banger. That's, that is what I would think of when thinking of banger in American English. I'm not sure what he's going to say, and I have no clue what this means in Britain. <laughs> and that's because the word banger is a type of firework in both countries. You've all seen them. They're the type of fireworks that go bang. So that's, that is most fireworks, I think. Fireworks? Um, no, I mean, I'm going to have to disagree with this one. Maybe there is a firework called... Like, maybe the brand is called banger, or maybe it says on the package banger. Or something. Maybe that's true, but n Americans don't call fireworks bangers. We call them fireworks, firecrackers, that kind of thing. Not not really bangers at all, I have to say. Actually, in the UK, there are two more meanings. Have you ever seen or perhaps driven one of those motor vehicles that just looks rubbish because of general wear and tear? In Britain, we might refer to such a banged up car as a banger. Huh. But don't worry, we don't eat them, some of us. That's reserved for bangers and mash. Ba uh, what? <laughs> See, this is much more interesting uh, to learn about the British side of this. I think in America, this is this is a stretch. Um, Americans might say say like that is a real banger, as in like a party or some some cool event. I've heard that before. Um, I've not heard banger with fireworks really ever. But uh, in Britain, this means <laughs> this means an old banged up car, uh, or or something about mashed potatoes, or or what's what's he saying? But don't worry, we don't eat them. Some of us. That's reserved for bangers and mash. Bangers and mash, Lawrence. What is bangers and mash? Well, I'll tell you. It's sausage and mash. There's a wild misconception that this dates back to what? World War Two. What? In fact, it dates back to World War One. Back then. Is this is this true? This is a real thing in Britain, bangers and mash. Now, bangers means sausage. And how did that happen? Maybe he's going to explain <laughs> explain how this happened. And there was a substantial meat shortage, and so sausages were made with a higher water content. And what this did was okay. it caused the sausages to pop when they were cooked at high heat. Uh, and so because of this, they inherited the name banger. Okay. And I'm glad to finally clear okay. that up because one of the questions I often <laughs> get asked by Americans is, what is bangers and mash? And this could be down to general curiosity. I, I, I've never heard of bangers and mash, so I don't know what Americans are even asking about this, who've heard of this, but immediately upon learning this word or phrase, bangers and mash, I am immediately <laughs> curious about what it is, and it's uh, sausage and mash. Okay, got it. Because <laughs> of, of exploding sausages in Britain, apparently. <laughs> But it can also be down to the fact that here the words banger and mash can both be applied to music. Okay, so admittedly huh. both countries use the term mashup to mean two songs melded together, not to mention the monster mash. But Americans <laughs> might also use the term banger to refer to a song that they particularly like. That's true. That is true. Uh, he So there, there, now he's getting to some stuff about banger that is more accurate about America. It, a banger can basically be a any good thing is the way i've heard it parties but also music like that's so, that song can be a banger that that's definitely true that's a good point glad he uh mentioned that i suppose another way that one might be a banger is by banging something into the net which brings us on to this hockey hockey how can hockey be different how can is it is there a lot of hockey in Britain? I've never even heard of hockey in Britain ever, <laughs> come to think of it. Um, first of all, hockey in America always means the sport. On ice with hockey sticks and a puck, um, it's a sport. If, if that's not what it is in Britain, I have no idea what it is. 
One thing that you probably don't know about me is that 157 years ago, when I was just 15 years old, <laughs> I played in defence on a hockey team. And wow. even though I say so myself, I was absolutely rubbish. But this was in Britain, where the word hockey used by itself does not mean the same thing that it does in North America. And it wasn't a puck we were really? shooting, it was a ball. And it wasn't played on ice, it was played on grass, so long as the football team wasn't in session. That version of hockey is the more popular in the United Kingdom, accounting for... Oh, this is a sport in the UK called hockey. This is what we would call field hockey in America. And we don't think of this sport very much. And when we, when we hear the word hockey, we think of ice hockey, which again, like I should have said ice hockey, but my instinct is just to say, oh, hockey, that's the one. That's on ice with skates and a puck. Um, but there's other types of hockey. So the one that's common in the UK is field hockey. And the one that's common in America is ice hockey. I think that that's the distinction. Okay, okay. For the fact that we refer to the sport known to North Americans as hockey as ice hockey. And yeah. while we're on the subject of H words, here's another one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> homely. Homely? Um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm spitting everywhere because, <laughs> uh, just thinking about this word. Homely? What does homely mean? This is not a word that's, <laughs> this is just not a word that's used much in America. I feel like my parents or grandparents might have used the word homely. What does homely even mean? This has just fallen out of fashion in America. Uh, but but I've heard it before, like people joking around using this word, homely. I, I almost want to say it means ugly. It either means ugly or beautiful. I'm not exactly sure which. Uh, and I certainly don't know what this could mean in Britain. Now, I can't quite remember the one in question, but not too long ago in one of my videos, I used the word homely to describe my new apartment. Huh. And this seemed to cause confusion with my American viewers who went, it doesn't look that bad. They weren't <laughs> quite as high pitched as that. And I thought, okay, homely, homely technically means ugly. I'm pretty sure in America, I don't, I don't even use this word, so I'm not exactly sure. But I think when I've heard it, it means ugly. Um, but... I kind of understand that it could mean a place that feels like home, like if this feels very homely, like a pla like a home, which is a good thing. Maybe that's how British people tend to use this. I know it doesn't. I just said it looks homely. What did you misinterpret me? <laughs> Basically, when a British person refers to their house as homely, they mean it's comfortable or cozy ah, okay. or what Americans would call homey. It was only after research. Ah, yeah. Yeah, we would probably say this is very homey. <laughs> we wouldn't really even say that, but I'd understand it in a funny way. Homey, I'd be like, yeah, this is a home. Comfortable. That's homely in Britain. And it all means, <laughs> homely means ugly in America. Yeah, okay, got Searching it. for this video that things started to make sense. Because in the United States, the word homely is used to describe somebody who's a bit ugly, which makes <laughs> yeah, me realize that yes. Aunt Mary Beth wasn't paying me a compliment. And I... <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> Again, I don't use this word, so I'm glad I sort of remembered. Yeah, it's not a polite word. It's an, it's really old school. It's like something that was popular 50 years ago, or to be, to be, say, call someone homely. Uh, maybe we should bring that back. <laughs> oh, man. I left the house that day without telling her that it was I that ate all of these. <laughs> Muffin. <laughs> Muffin. <laughs> this, this list is fantastic. Uh, it's just getting better and better. Um, <laughs> these words are so incredibly random to me, but I think that's why I enjoy it so much. Muffin. What is a Muffin. I was having some muffins uh, just the other day, actually. Muffins in America. How would you even describe a muffin? It's like poofy on top and smaller on bottom in a bit of wrapping paper. Um, it's not like cake. It's uh, usually sort of a snack food in America. You can be chocolate chip muffins, um, blueberry muffins. I don't know. I, I almost need to bring up a picture, I think. Okay, yeah, these are muffins. 
these little treats, you know, poofy on top, uh, wrapping paper, all sorts. They, they're very, like, usually not that good for you, but taste very good. And Americans, we like to eat these for breakfast. And if you're like me, you eat them uh, at any time, really. It's, it's always muffin time. But <laughs> what, what does a muffin mean in Britain? That's the question. How did this happen? When it comes to British and American differences, perhaps muffins are the finest example of anything you can do, I can do better. And you'll see why that is in a wow. moment. But in Britain, here's what a muffin is. It's a thick, round, baked yeast roll. You what? Huh? What is this? This is a muffin? Well, you know what? You know what this is? In America, uh, I would call this an English muffin. <laughs> Wait a minute. That could, no, I'm having an epiphany. That makes sense. Because this is a, really, we should call this a British muffin. But we call this an English muffin. And I guess that's, at least that's sort of accurate, because it sounds like English and British people do eat these. Uh, this kind of thing, which is a muffin in Britain, but an English muffin here. And very different to what we call a muffin. Um, Americans don't eat these very often. This, yeah, it's pretty rare to have an English muffin. It's a breakfast food you sometimes see, but pretty rare. But I, I have seen this before. Usually toasted and served with butter. I read that on Wikipedia. And does this sound familiar, Americans? Does it? Does it? Does it? It's what you refer to as an English muffin. Yes, now, yes. before anybody starts bashing Americans ha. for changing the name, just know that the term English muffin was popularized by none other than an Englishman. Samuel really? Bath Thomas oh. moved from Plymouth, England to New York City in the 19th century. Really? I don't... Okay, I don't feel bad at all. I was thinking, like... Why did we just ste steal the muffin and then name it something else? The English muffin. But it was an English man who brought it to America. And pr I'm guessing he sold them and called them English muffins. So it's his fault. <laughs> it was there that he opened his famed bakery and English muffins became his signature item. Huh, 150 cool. years later, Thomas English muffins are still widely available in the United wow. States today. So then for what wow. food item do Americans reserve the singular word muffin? Well, yeah. it just happens that this was a conversation that came up on my most recent live stream. Muffins are typically less sweet and more crumbly than cupcakes and are usually unfrosted. That's right. In the United States, a muffin is a confection similar to a cupcake, only unfrosted and less sweet, sometimes even savory. And you'll... Wait a minute. Hold up. Are, are you saying that what I think of as a muffin, the, the thing I showed you, the images of, that doesn't exist in Britain? That's not a thing? You would, you would call that like a unfrosted cupcake? <laughs> Which is kind of what it is. Sort of. Uh, you don't even call it an American muffin or something? Or do these even exist in Britain? I, I have a lot of questions about this now. I'll never guess what we sometimes call this in the United Kingdom. We call it an American muffin. Hey! Or sometimes just muffin, <laughs> okay. which is really going to come. Perfect. Uh, that, that's a, literally, I was like, if we call it an English muffin, wouldn't it just be perfect if if British call it an American muffin, the, the stuff that we eat, and perfect. All right, great. Use everybody. Thank you for watching the latest entry in this series. Let me... <laughs> okay. And there we have it. That was, that was quite good, quite entertaining. That was, that was by Lost in the Pond, and I got to give that a like. That was very enjoyable. I didn't realize there is so many random things that, like, words <laughs> that both Americans and British use that it, it's amazing we can even understand each other. It's amazing we can even communicate at all. It's amazing you understand a word I'm saying because it feels like every other random word means something different. Uh, whether you're in America or Britain, um, we, uh, city was kind of, eh, carry on, <laughs> banger, hockey, homely, and muffin. This was a very, this is a funny list. This is quite enjoyable to me. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like 
or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these words here today, or, or if I misunderstood something, that'd be very helpful. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.